But uh, William is a consulting climatologist who worked with the Bureau, Australian Bureau of Meteorology for 38 years in weather forecasting research and applied sciences, applied studies. For 12 years until 1998, he was head of its National Climate Centre. He's also been project manager of an Australian government project for assistance to the Meteorology and Environmental Protection Administration of Saudi Arabia, which was based in Jeddah in the 1980s. This uh, diagram we've seen quite a lot. Uh, it goes back 400,000 years. It's the uh, ice core from Vostok in Antarctica. The top two uh, lines, the temperature and the carbon dioxide, we're very familiar with. If you've seen Al Gore's movie, uh, The Inconvenient Truth, he'll tell you about how this is, the carbon dioxide is in lockstep with the temperature. They must be connected. Uh, in fact, carbon dioxide follows the temperature of about 1,000 years. But the point that I want to really emphasise today is this lower uh, uh, record of the dust in the Antarctic core. Because what we've been told <coughs> incessantly is that with climate change, global warming, we're going to have more droughts, it's going to be hotter. But what this record quite clearly shows is that during the cold periods, there was lots of dust accumulating over <coughs> the Antarctic. And the dust sort of disappeared during the warm periods. Essentially, as the earth warms up, we seem to get much more vegetation and much, much more binding of the soil together. And there's a very good reason for this. That's because 70% of the earth's surface is covered by ocean. And as the surface temperature rises, evaporation increases, rainfall increases. <coughs> and so what we have is that more rainfall over the land surfaces when the earth is warmer. When it gets colder, we get these lot of dust in Antarctica. Where does it come from? It comes from places like uh, Central Australia. All of the big sand dunes in Central Australia, they didn't occur during the, 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 uh, the Holocene and those periods. They occurred during the, the, uh, the uh, Ice Ages. And uh, as the, we came out of the Ice Age, the rainfall in Savannah. If we look at the last uh, 20,000 years, again, this is a diagram that, that Bob has shown. Essentially, more snow accumulation as the, uh, as the temperature rose as the, uh, uh, through this period. Uh, the point I want to make though is that through the Holocene, uh, we're told that you know, this is a period of stable climate. And so now what's going to happen is put more carbon dioxide and it's going to get warmer. But in fact, it was warmer a little earlier uh, in the period 5,000 to 10,000 years ago. And there's abundant evidence that the desert regions of the world we're a desert now, were in fact savannah regions. Uh, I lived a few years in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, and there's a lot of evidence around through there that only 2,000 years ago there was much more rainfall in that, in that area. The, the Nabataeans in the sort of northern part of, of uh, Saudi Arabia are quite a thriving community. Uh, but uh, you know, the whole of the, the region is sort of drying out through this period. Well, I want to just make a uh, a point, uh, I've got my quote here. Uh, Bob's first slide was of the, uh, during the Little Ice Age. And uh, if we look, it's a uh, medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age through here. We're told that then this is the pre industrial time. It would be good to get back to the pre industrial climate because you know, we've warmed. But in the Little Ice Age, winter frost fares were common, as Bob pointed out. Many rivers of Europe period periodically froze during the Little Ice Age. The London diarist John Evelyn records that in 1683-1684 the Thames River froze from late December to early February. Now he wrote, conditions were terrible, with men and cattle perishing, and the seas locked with ice such that no vessels could stir out or come in. The fowls, fish and birds and exotic plants and greens were universally perishing. Food and fuel were exceptionally dear and coal smoke hung so thickly that one could scarcely see across the street and one could scarcely breathe. Uh, is this the sort of climate we want to go back to by cutting back on carbon dioxide? Uh, this is the Little Ice Age, pre-industrial uh, Europe. And uh, the point though is that climate changes, it has changed, that uh, we can go through our history through this period, medieval war period, even back to the Roman period. Julius Caesar, he went across and beat up the Gauls. He went across the Rhine River. He built himself a, uh, a bridge across the Rhine. Went up and beat them up, came back, pulled the bridge down, and 
they was, he was uh, sort of safe in, in Gaul from these uh, uh, barbarians across the river. But 500 years later, during the Dark Age, the Vandals came back across the Rhine River, the frozen Rhine River. Uh, it was quite a different temperature, quite a different climate in 500 years. But then 500 years later, we have the, uh, the medieval warm period with uh, Greenland being settled, and then the Little Ice Age. So, even though this might show that it's uh, fairly equitable, a lot of changes take place in the climate just by that little record. Imagine then what it was like back in this period, uh, with uh, ice sheets over North America coming down as far as, uh, as St. Louis from Vancouver and uh, New York, down as far as, uh, as London over Northern Europe. Uh, the Great Lakes, more than a kilometre deep under ice ages, under, under ice sheets. So, climate does change, it changes naturally. Even locally, here we've got the Murray Darling Basin, this is the uh, rainfall record, it's published by the Bureau of Meteorology on its, uh, on its website. And what we see, the anomaly of rainfall from 1900 to about to, 19, uh, to 2007, what we find is year to year variability. A lot of years when 100, up to 100 millimetres below the uh, average, others when it's above, but some of these very good years, uh, very huge inflows, but there hasn't been very many of those for a while. Now we've been told that you know, this is unprecedented uh, drought in this area, but if you look at the accumulated anomalies, we find that right through the early part of the 20th century, rainfall essentially was below the long-term average. The trend here was down, 1,500-1,600 metres, that we're at about uh, four years' rainfall we've lost in this period here. But then, fortunately, in the 1950s, we had some very good rainfall periods right through here, and so the trend goes upwards. And now, about 10 years ago, we've come back into this trend, which is really not much different to this period here. Now, are we looking forward to about another 30 or 40 years of what it was previously, or is this just a short-term trend? Now, is this what we should be uh, aiming for this rainfall over the last 50 years, or should we look at longer periods? Uh, the climate does change quite naturally over decadal and multi-decadal periods, and so by just looking at what we did over the last few decades is not really a good guide because we know that earlier on, and particularly from our uh, uh, cultural history, that even in the 1890s and earlier there were some very dry periods back in the uh, in the 1800s. And this is the uh, sort of the decadal, uh, decadal average in the rainfall. We see again these very wet periods through here. And we've now come back to what it was you know, back in the, uh, the early part of the 20th century. So when people talk about this as being unprecedented, we should look at them and say, look, you know, let's look at the records and see what do we mean by unprecedented. Well, now talk about uh, sort of the science of climate change. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of uh, recoil. We want to talk about clean coal. Uh, this is a operating power station in Victoria. Oh, uh, we know that the, both the condensers are working, there's stuff coming out of the chimneys, but it's not uh, very dirty. Well, that's steam. What you want to notice is this carbon dioxide that's coming out here, which is a uh, colourless gas, is that going to do any, any damage to us? It's claimed that fossil fuel burning will pollute the atmosphere with carbon dioxide leading to global warming and dangerous climate change. Is this really true? 